These are more practice problems for exam one. You have to review these two. First question is an uh, equation that's solved through substitution. Now, if you look at this question, you have x squared and a square, so that makes it a fourth order diff equation, a fourth order equation. And we haven't learned how to do fourth order equations, so this looks like a really hard question. However, if you look closely, you see x squared plus 1 repeated here and there. In that case, we can do a substitution. We can just say x squared plus 1 is u, and then this equation is u squared minus 5u plus 4, which is just the quadratic equation, which is a lot simpler, right? We can even factor this easily because uh, 4 times 1 is 4 and 4 plus 1 is 5. So u minus 4 times u minus 1 equal to 0. And you get u minus 4 equal to 0, which gives you u equals to 4. u minus 1 equal to 0, which gives you u equals to 1. Therefore, you have you, you have uh, something more to work with. Uh, by the way, right here, this is where a lot of people get fooled. They think, oh, I have the answer. Answer is 4 and 1. And then you get it wrong because your U is something that you developed in order to solve this. The question is really asking for the value of X, and we didn't get the value of X yet, so we have to go further. So what, what does this mean? This means that x squared plus 1 is 4, because u is x squared plus 1, and or x squared plus 1 equals to 1. And you have to figure out what the value of x is for each one of these cases. For this one, you subtract 1 both sides. And when you take the square root, remember you need the plus or minus. So you have two, two answers. Here you have x squared equal to 0, so x equal to 0. Uh, that gives you three solutions. So the answer is x equal to 0, square root of 3, and also negative square root of 3. Those are the three answers for this one. Here, again, you see something complicated, but did you know that 3 to the 2x is like, 3 to the x times 3 to the x? Well, you probably know that if you have the same base, uh, the two, two exponents, they add up. So x plus x does give you 2x. So uh, this is actually true, which means 3 to the x squared. So 3 to the 2x is 3 to the x squared. Uh, if you rewrite it that way, then this again, you see is a problem for substitution because you have 3 to the x, right? You have 3 to the x here, you have 3 to the x here, so you rewrite that as u, so you have u squared minus 10 times u plus 9 equal to 0, where u is this 3 to the x. Okay, now I see that 9 times 1 is 9, and 9 plus 1 is 10, so this factor is as u minus 9, u minus 1 equal to 0, so the solutions are u equals to 9 and 1. But, again, you need to figure out the value of x, so u equal to 9 actually turns into 3 to the x equals to 9, and u equal to 1 turns into 3 to the x equal to 1. You have to figure out what these are individually. Well, 3 to what is equal to 9? I know that 9 is 3 squared. So x must be 2 for this. Another one is, uh, what gives you 1 when you ex exponentiate? Well, anything to the 0th power is 1, so it must be 0. Anything to the 0th power is 1, so x must be 0. So those are the two answers. Another kind of question that I want to go over are uh, these absolute value equations, uh, but slightly more challenging because you have x on the other side. 
Now, what you have to remember is that whenever you have absolute value of something, then when you when you get rid of this absolute value, you end up with plus or minus the right side. So that's that's number one fact. Fact number one that you have to remember. Uh, but the second thing that you have to fact number two is uh, for equations with fractions. Okay, fractions. Equations with square roots and also with these absolute value equations, they may have something called extraneous solutions. And uh, extraneous solutions is, uh, these are fake solutions. Uh, they seemingly, seemingly satisfy the equation. You, you get the answer, but at the end of the day, when you take those values and you plug it into the original equation, you find out that in some cases they are they are not solutions, so you you have to watch out for this. Okay, so you have to remember two things. One is that when you get rid of the plus, uh, when you get rid of the absolute value, you just put plus minus on the other side. Another is that uh, if you have equations with fractions or square roots or absolute values, uh, after you get the solutions, you have to plug it back into the original equation to make sure that these are indeed solutions. So let's try this out. x plus 3, you take away the absolute value and you apply this fact. It's plus or minus 5x minus 5. Now plus or minus is applied to the entire thing, not just to 5x. So you need to put a parenthesis. So that means you have two kinds of equations. One is one with the plus x plus 3 equals to 5x minus 5. Another one is x plus 3 equals to negative of 5x minus 5. We have to track down the solutions of each one of these. Okay, uh, you, I want to subtract x both sides and add 5 both sides. Now over here, x will cancel away and 5 will cancel away on the other side. On the left side, you're going to get 8. 5x minus x is 4x, and dividing by 4 gives you x equals to 2. Over here, um, if I move everything to this side, this minus will go away. It will be plus. And x plus 5x is 6x. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And you add 2, divide by 6 and you get x equals to 2 sixth, which is 1 third. You have to reduce to make it as simple as possible. Okay, so we got two solutions, but it's not over yet. We have to figure out if it's if any of them are fake solutions. Let's plug in 2 back here. So you have 2 plus 5, 3, and 5 times 2 minus 5. 2 plus 3 is 5, absolute value of 5 is 5, so you get 5. On the other hand, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 5 is 5. So we didn't know if it was equal, but it is correct. So in this case, this is a solution. Check. Uh, 1 third, uh, 1 third plus 3 absolute value. Is this same as 5 times 1 third minus 5? So that's the question. Well, uh, 3 and 1 thirds, that's uh, 3 is 9 over 3. And this is 5 times 1 third. This number will only multiply to the top. And 5 is uh, 15 over 3. I need common denominators, that's why I'm doing this. And the question is this. Well, now that we have common denominators, you just add the numerator. 1 plus 9 is 10, so you have 10 over 3. On this side, 5 minus 15, that's negative 10 over 3. That's the question. Well, they're not, not the same. Here, we know that they're not the same. So this is an x. This is no good. So 
our conclusion is that answer x equals to 2. Only. This is the only solution. One third is not a solution. Okay, now we have an absolute value inequality with also another x appearing on the right. It's the same kind of deal. You want to uh, solve it as an equation. Uh, you use the same kind of uh, knowledge that we, we did before, like how to take away the absolute value, how to identify extraneous solutions. Uh, but the only difference is that we have an inequality. And as, as I said, inequalities are 10 times harder than solving equality. So before we try to solve the inequality, we will just solve the equality and use the equality to actually figure out the solution of the inequality. Okay, so we write down the equality. The equation is just this. Take away the absolute value sign, so 2x minus 1 is plus or minus x plus 4. So we have two cases, either 2x minus 1 equals to x plus 4, or 2x minus 1 is negative x plus 4. Now here I subtract x both sides and add 1 both sides. So 2x minus x is just x. Uh, negative 1 and positive 1 cancels. Here x, x cancels. 4, 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. So you have x equals to 5 as one answer. Over here if I distribute the negative sign, 2x minus 1 is negative x minus 4. And then I add x both sides add one both sides. No, no, sorry. I subtract x and add one. So because I want to... No, no, so I, I do add. Um, sorry, this is really confusing. Just a minute. Yeah, since I want to get rid of the negative x, I add x. Uh, so that's going to go away. And then I want to add one so that I, I want to get rid of negative one. So 2x plus x is 3x. What, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, negative x plus x is 0, negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3, and then you divide by 3, you get x equal to negative 1. Now let's verify. Let's verify. So what happens if I plug in x equals to 5? 2 times 5 minus 1, 5 plus 4. This is a question. And 2 times 5 minus 1, that's uh, 10 minus 1, which is 9. 5 plus 4 is 9, so that's okay. So that's okay. How about x equal to negative 1? 2 times negative 1 minus 1, absolute value, and uh, negative 1 plus 4. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. But what does absolute value do? Absolute value makes it positive, right? So... Uh, indeed, 3 is equal to 3, and therefore this is also an answer. That's good. So, in this case, uh, we didn't have any extraneous solutions. All of them were genuine solutions, uh, no fake solutions. Uh, but this is not what we are going after. We're going after the inequality. So, in order to get the inequality, we first put those solutions on the number line. We have negative 1 and then 5. Those are the two identified solution of the equation. And that divides the entire number line into three parts. For each of these three intervals, you have to sample points and figure out whether those points satisfy the inequality or not. Um, so uh, let's see. Here's a... I'll do... I'll do negative 2. 0 is my favorite. And then for this one, I'll just do 10. 10 is also nice. Okay. So for negative 2, what do we have? Uh, negative 2, 2 times negative 2 minus 1, and less than or equal to negative 2 plus 4. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Absolute value gives you positive 5. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2, and that's a no good. So that's, that's a no, no, no. And then uh, 0, let's see, absolute value of 2 times 0 minus 1, less or equal to 0 plus 4. 
2 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 absolute value gives you positive 1. 0 plus 4 is 4. Is that yes? Yes, that's a good one. So this, this is good. And then when you plug in 10, 2 times 10 minus 1, less or equal to 10 plus 4. 20 minus 1 is 19. 10 plus is 1 is 14, so 19 is bigger. So for, for positive 10, it's a no-no. So that's a no-no. Okay, after all this work, we now see that the interval that does work is only negative 1 to 5, and because we have the equal sign here, the endpoints are included, because uh, equal is okay. At 5 and negative 1, the equal sign holds, so negative 1 and 5 are included. And uh, the answer would be, in interval notation, it should be negative 1 to 5, and the endpoints are included, so I use uh, brackets. Now, uh, in order to write this as just by inequality, you can also write it saying that x is between negative 1 and 5. Okay, so this is what you should write when the question says, write the answer in an interval notation. And this is what you want to write if it doesn't say it, and just say, say find the solution for x.